It's Friday, September the 2nd. Another late summer evening in Texas. Another night for a football game. Hi, I'm Jeff McCourt. Welcome to Texas Passions. I'm at Lynn Hall Stadium in Shirts, Texas for tonight's game between the Cibolo Steel Knights and the late Travis Cavaliers. Cibolo comes into this game with a 1-0 record, having knocked off San Antonio Madison 37-7 in their opener. They're led by Steve Lindhoff. The Cavaliers come into this game 0-1. Hank Carter leads a team that's ranked number eight in the state. They lost their opener at home to Converse Judson, giving up 15 points in the fourth quarter to lose 35-28. Late Travis had been ranked number two, but that loss knocked him down to eight. Cibolo comes in as the number 17. This should be another good one. Some high clouds, it's kind of sticky, possibility of rain. We'll see if the weather has any impact on tonight's game. An early season bout between two strong teams. Both think they've got a chance to make a deep playoff run. We'll see what happens. I've never been to Civil Oak before, so I had to stop off and try some of the local fare. And for me, that means barbecue. While we wait for the teams to take the field, let's talk about barbecue. Farm and Barbecue is located at 102 South Main Street in Civil Oak. It sure looked and smelled like a barbecue joint when I pulled into the parking lot. According to their website, Harmon serves up some of the best barbecue in the San Antonio area. Based upon what I had to eat, I would beg to differ. The brisket was dry and crumbly to the touch. The meat did have a smoky taste, but there was no smoke ring cooked into it. It did not have a bark on it, possibly removed by the cutter when he prepared my order. Their sauce was fine and absolutely needed. Without it, the meat was like chewing on a piece of paper towel. The ribs were big and meaty, but again, overly dry. I almost could not finish eating my order, not because I was full, but rather because of the amount of work I had to do to chew it. Had I eaten there at 11 in the morning when they first opened, maybe the meat would have been moist and juicy. But I was at Harmon's around 5 p.m. and the barbecue tasted like the life had been cooked out of it. The restaurant was clean and had a warm atmosphere. The staff was friendly. There's a large room in the back where people sit back and, with a few beers and enjoy live music. All that's well and good, but I went to Harmon's for the barbecue and came away disappointed. This barbecue fell short of expectations. I can only give it a shaky hook -em. The start of the game was delayed 30 minutes due to lightning strikes in the area. A gentle rain fell through the first 10 minutes of the game. The Knights took the opening kickoff. They made a couple of first downs before punting. Charlie Brewer connected with Garrett Wilson on a short pass, then he took it 75 yards to the house for the first score. Quarterback Xavier Martin fumbled on the Knights' next possession. A few plays later, Brewer took it in himself to make it 14 to nothing. The Knights answered with an 84-yard drive capped off by a 33-yard touchdown pass to Caden Stearns in the corner of the end zone. It took the Cavaliers just one play to go 76 yards on a pass from Brewer to Malik Barkley to make it 21-7 with 2.37 left in the first quarter. The Knights stormed back with another long drive. Brendan Brady took it in from short yardage to make it 21-14. Here come the Cavs. After a flea flicker, move the ball deep into steel territory. 
Charlie Brewer connected with Cade Green for a score. And here come the Knights right back again. After a long pass set up the Knights with a first and goal, Martin carried it in on a quarterback draw to make it 28-21. <laughs> A fumbled toss by Malik Barkley set the Knights up on the Cavaliers' 39. Martin threw another touchdown pass to tie the game at 28-28. The game went back and forth in the second half as the teams traded touchdowns and field goals. Lake Travis scored when Brewer connected with Garrett Wilson on a diving catch in the end zone. Steele regained the lead on a short dive by Brady. With 2.52 left to play and down by three, Lake Travis took possession on their 20-yard line following a steel punt. Charlie Brewer had been helped off the field on the Cavs' previous possession, so Matthew Baldwin came in at quarterback. His short passing led the Cavs into field goal position. With just two seconds left in regulation, Cameron Dicker connected on a 46-yard field goal to tie the game and send it into overtime. Steele took possession first on the Cavs' 25. It took Brady only two carries to get the score, making it 56-49. Lake Travis has to answer to keep the game going. Baldwin hit Cade Brewer, who walked into the end zone. The Cavs thought about going for two, but their extra point kick tied the game at 56. Lake Travis started first in the second overtime period. They could only muster a 29-yard field goal to go up 59-56. Now the Knights need to meet it or beat it. They pounded Brady over and over again. Facing fourth and one from the two, the Knights called timeout. They can either kick to tie the game or try for the touchdown to win it. They decided to go for it. Martin rolled to his right, was pressured by a Cav linebacker, then threw the ball into the end zone for Rashid Beecham. He dropped the pass, and the game was over. A thrilling double overtime victory for Lake Travis, 59-56. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.